Welcome to Dorista. I'm Kino Gri, and today I'm talking about my philosophical analysis of Evangelion. Alexa, no! So, Evangelion, after I got a little bit older and I could process the spectacle um, when I was in university, I began to realize the much the layers of deeper meaning. It has a lot of Kabbalahist imagery. Um, it'll look like Christian things, and I guess in a lot of ways there is kind of that. But it's mostly the old um, Kabbalahist traditions. You know, the Tree of Life, the angels are all named after um, Jewish angels, parts of God, and things like that. But I think that the really important thing is Evangelion is a modern myth. By myth here, I don't mean, you know, just a story. I mean, in a lot of psychological theory, there's kind of like a, a template of psychological imprints, and all human beings can access this. You call it the collective consciousness, I'm pretty sure. And I think in my crude way of explaining, the myth is kind of the process by which we discover our relation to it. We put these huge concepts into something that the human mind can um, crack or even hold on to. So in this way, even Yelian is a modern myth. It talk, I think it really speaks to what it is a lot of us experience in our lives um, due to the uh, challenges we face, the difficulties of growing up of trying to connect with people, of the pain of connecting to people. This constant, you know, neurotic push-pull, I want to be closer, I want to be farther away, it hurts, why do I do it? I remember my friend said to me, after his dog died, he was considering getting a new pet some years afterward. He said, but I remember crying when my dog died, and I don't know why I'd ever put myself through that again. Maybe it's just my, you know, masochism, but I was thinking... If you don't go through it again, how can you have another dog friend or another pet friend? You know, that is part of the, the pain is part of the enjoyment, I'm afraid. Um, it's not the fun part of the enjoyment, but it's the surplus of the enjoyment. So if you take it that way, um, I, I still, I think why I said before that Ayanami Ray is the most triumphant character, it's because she's the one who most transcends her condition, who takes control and surpasses herself. It's not really clear when it happens in the show, but I think at some point she gains her own agency and she begins to manipulate the people around her based on their expectations of her. And she plays it perfectly until she gets into the position to take over and reach apotheosis, which uh, it sounds a fancy word, but it just means ascend, becoming a god. Um, if you look at old stories, this happens a lot. In the Bible, you'll hear stories about like a man getting on a chariot and being taken to heaven to live with God. Uh, in the Greek stories, you know, when um, Heracles finishes his tasks, he he gets to go up to Mount Olympus and live with the gods. Um, I don't I don't think it's Hermes who takes him up there. I don't remember for sure. But the important thing to notice about Heracles is that. After he finishes all of his labors, his family is still dead. They don't come back. There is no happy ending. That pain is still in his heart. And I think that's true with Ayanami and the other characters, is even after they ascend, they they don't escape their they don't repair anything. What they repair is their own perception of it. They metamorphize, they become something new. In this way, it's appropriate that she's called a doll because a doll means uh, a pupa is a doll, like the um, stage of a bug. And, you know, a bug crystallizes, it grows wings, and it becomes its adult form, and then it does what it does, and it dies. And then, you know, that's kind of what Ayanami does, but she does it willingly. She throws herself off, and maybe in this way, uh, I find the most German connection to her because in the German philosophical tradition, there's the old pessimists who in turn were part of this old pre-romantic movement called um, Sturm und Drang, which means storm and drive. 
And uh, yeah, you find a purpose in life and you shoot yourself off to it and then you expire. That's part of your movement. It's nothing to be afraid of. Um, I think there's probably other gospels to be found in this myth and they're probably for other people to speak on. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. You know, there's a lot of tension between Ray and Asuka that doesn't exist in the same way. I think in a lot of ways they're kind of parallel stories like where one goes up the other one's going down from its perspective like two sides of a coin sort of thing um yeah again you point out to that the german german blah 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 but there's a lot of weird german stuff going on there i've heard some people describe evangelion as if uh, a bunch of nazis exploring the antarctic found a space alien um probably true but nerve itself is a Japanese, or not Japanese, German word meaning nerve. And um, a lot of the words in it are German. The predecessor in the history of it is called Gerhin, which means uh, brains. And, um, you know, if we see when Ray's reading her book, she's reading a German textbook on um, biology. So there's some unspoken connection there which I think ties her to Asuka. Asuka Shinigami, isn't it? She She's kind of a different character. She's a new gospel, I think. I don't think that makes her inauthentic or wrong, but it makes her authentically a new thing. Um, the little tensions of her, what is it? Not hysterical, hysteronic attachment to her mother and that sort of um, problem, the need to be recognized and not face annihilation at this sort of like primordial Lacanian mirror stage um, really is gone in the new Asuka. Um, but I think she's also then, if we look at it, like she achieved her apotheosis in the first one when she uh, fought only on batteries and eventually died to the mass production Evas. And then the new Oscar is maybe continuing from that apotheosis with her metamorphized um, self. You know, she still feels these anxieties, but they drive her in a new direction. And she still pushes people away from her. You know, she tries to go it alone, which I think is maybe to her detriment. But you know, she's trying to protect herself. I'm excited to see how she develops in the new one. Probably going to have to watch the other uh, reboots before I can see the new one, you know, with my friends and stuff. But I'm definitely going to watch it with my friends. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video.